welcome back to my channel thank you so much for subscribing for commenting for liking and for all your support and if it's your first time welcome to my channel and don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed so welcome to wisdom wednesdays uh we're back again and let's go to the book of exodus chapter 32 verse 21 to 23 which says and Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Do not let the anger of my Lord become hot. You know the people that they are set on evil. For they said to me, Make us gods that shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron was the right hand man of Moses, sort of like his assistant. He was the one who spoke on behalf of Moses so when God sent Moses to speak to Pharaoh but now Moses felt like his speech was defected Moses had a stuttering tongue so he would stutter when he speaks and this is why he was so afraid in the beginning to go out and answer the call of God over his life you see God doesn't care about your defects God doesn't care about your limit because God when he chooses you he sees that you're fit for the job you know some of you are saying God I think I have this and I have that and I can't do this because of this and that. God, when he gives you something, it's not about your defects. It's not about your flaws. It's because God found you fit for that place. God found you fit to walk through that door. God has found you fit to receive that blessing and that breakthrough. So God doesn't really look at our flaws and our defects, but he sees the finished man, the finished man. This is what I love about God. He doesn't see my flaws the way I see them. God sees my end result. God sees my full potential and this is the way that God looks at us and so God saw Moses and he chose Moses to be a deliverer and a prophet but Moses saw his own defect before God and so God compromised with Moses and said okay okay I can see your brother Aaron is coming Aaron will speak on your behalf and so this is the role that Aaron played in Moses life Aaron spoke on behalf of Moses and also Aaron did signs and miracles just as Moses Moses did but now there was a time that came whereby now the right hand man of Moses now needed to take leadership now needed to stand in that place of leadership that place that Moses always stood on so Moses went up the mountain to speak with God for 40 days and nights and now Aaron was left with the children of Israel and perhaps there were elders at that time who were also leaders at that time but Aaron being the right hand man of God was expected to now lead the people of, of Israel or at least govern them for that 40 days and nights. You see some of you maybe you are in a job or maybe in a ministry and you have to really prepare yourself wherever that you are if you're under somebody you have to really make sure that you're taking in every challenge you're taking in every form of wisdom you're taking in every skill that you can get in that place it can be education take in everything because you don't know when the time is coming whereby the leader will have to leave you in charge it can be for a day it can be for a week it can be for a year you don't know the time that even God is going to leave you in charge of the house of God you don't know the time whereby you need to step up. You need to rise up and shine. You don't know the time when that is going to come. Therefore, you must always be prepared. Learn as much as you can. Get as much information as you can and prepare yourself for the time when you will arise and shine. And so the moment for Aaron to arise as a leader and not just as a speaker, not just as somebody who does miracles, signs and wonders on behalf of Moses, on the side of Moses to the kings. Now he needed to lead all these people alone, no longer with Moses for that short time of administration, for that short time of 40 days and 40 nights. But unfortunately, the short administration of Aaron ended up in a golden calf being made so that the children of Israel would worship it. We see Aaron's um, explanation as to why this golden calf has been made. Aaron explains himself by saying, you know how the people that they are set on evil and um, you know they told me to make gods that they should go before us because you Moses you disappeared and they were saying we don't know what has become of him you know he told us to come out of his land and now he's just disappeared on us you see when God makes you a leader 
He expects that you are not going to be a people pleaser. He expects that you're going to please him. When your boss makes you a leader, he expects that you are going to listen to him rather than listen to the people. And so Moses, when he left Aaron with the children of Israel, even with the elders, Moses would have expected Aaron to listen to Moses, to listen to him and to listen to God rather than the children of Israel. So here, the problem is not really with the children of Israel. The problem here was with Aaron. He failed to lead the children of Israel. He failed to restrain them when they desired to follow after other gods. He failed to answer their questions when they asked, where is Moses? And he has disappeared. He failed to tell them that Moses has gone to seek the face of God. Moses is coming back. He failed to give those answers because he was not prepared. You know, if you are in a place whereby you are learning things, maybe it's under your boss, it's under your pastor, it's not a time for partying and fun and games. Even if you're in a courtship, you're dating, it's not a time of parties and games. It's a time of learning. It's a time of growing. It's a time to mature so that you can prepare for the next level. You can prepare for the next season. Your season and your process is not a time for parties and games. It's not a time to show up and be famous. You know, just because you're speaking to kings, just because you're speaking to Pharaoh, you think you're famous. But what are you learning in that process of being in the face of kings? What are you learning in that process of being with all these clients at your workplace? What are you taking from that situation? It's not a time for games. It's a time to learn so that when you're left to arise, when it's your time to step up, you can step up and minister with maturity and minister with grace and minister with wisdom. Are you going to be a people pleaser when it's your time to step up? Because if you're going to be a people pleaser, your role is not going to last. You will not last, but you will crumble because you're doing everything that other people want you to do. You're not doing what you need to do as a person in that place, as a leader in that place. You know, even today, some are in marriages. They're trying to please their family members, but they don't try to please their husband or their wife. They don't try to please God, but they choose our Outsiders. They're trying to please their best friend. They get all their advice from best friends. That means they are a people pleaser. They're not pleasing the conducts and the rules of their marriage. They're not pleasing the ways of God in their marriage. They're pleasing other people. Are you a people pleaser today? Wherever that you are today, are you pleasing people? Or are you trying to live out the position and the conducts of the position where you are today? The place that you are today, are you pleasing that place so that you can keep it? Or are you pleasing other people so that you can keep those people? You know, sometimes you might have to leave certain things. You might have to leave certain people in order for you to keep that position. In order for you to go high. You cannot go higher with everybody. Somebody has to stay behind. Some things need to stay behind. Unfortunately for Aaron, he tried to please the people and he did the desires of the children of Israel, which in fact were the desires of the enemy so that the enemy can bring charge against the children of Israel. You see, when you come out of a place of bondage, when you go into that realm of deliverance, the enemy will try to get you back into bondage. And this is what the enemy did. He incited the children of Israel so that they go back to the bondage of worshiping false gods so that God can be angered and reject them. The enemy enemy saw that they had the favor of God and he was trying to steal the favor of God over the children of Israel. But now we had this leader, Aaron, who was not prepared to fight for the children of Israel, not prepared to fight for that favor, not prepared to fight for that deliverance that they can maintain and keep it. And they failed. They worshiped a false God, a God made with hands, a calf made with gold. It's just very unfortunate that Aaron's time of rising up and stepping up just came when he was not prepared. How dangerous, how sad, how tragic it is when we have to step up at a certain time, but we're not yet mature to step up to that time. When the time of us stepping up comes when we're not yet mature enough, when we're not prepared enough. How dangerous and how sad it is. How wasteful when your time comes of breakthrough, but you're not prepared. When your time comes of breakthrough and honor, but you're not yet fit to receive that honor. You're not yet fit to receive that breakthrough. You see, Esther became a queen at a time when she was fit. She prepared for 12 months. So she was prepared and fit to be a queen. The time came at a right time. You see, when our moment comes, we have to pray that we are fit. 
Don't pray for God to bring the breakthrough. Pray that you may be fit when the breakthrough arrives. You see, if God has told you that something is going to happen to you, it's going to happen without a doubt. So you must begin to pray, God help me that I may be fit when my time to step up arises. God help me that I may be prepared when my time of honor arrives. Because there's nothing more dangerous and more wasteful, more sad and tragic than to be unfit at your time of appointment. And so this is what happened. Aaron was unfit at his time of appointment. And so he was still living as a people pleaser. You know, being a people pleaser is very dangerous. Being a people pleaser means that you have to lower your standards. You have to be complacent. You have to settle. This is what being a people pleaser is. You settle and you don't find fulfillment. You will never find fulfillment pleasing other people, pleasing other things. So when your time to arise comes, are you going to be a people pleaser? Do you live your life today as a people pleaser? You try to please people in all that you do, but you don't try to please God. Maybe you're married, you don't really please your, your spouse, you please your family members and your best friends. What are you doing today? Look at your life. Are you trying to please people? Because pleasing people is an example of not being prepared for your moment of rising. When you please people, it's very toxic. That means you're not yet prepared to walk in the place of honor. You're not prepared to arise and shine because you're so much into pleasing other people, so much into doing what other people tell you to do. That means you can't really hear the voice of God. You can't really do what God wants you to do. You can't really do what that place of honor wants you to do in order for you to keep it, to maintain it. You have to do what other people want you to do. You know, even now in this industry, maybe the industry of the entertainment industry, the industry of movies, even this industry of YouTube, there's a lot of things that will try to grab your attention. There's a lot of people that will try to tell you what to do. But you have to be true to yourself. Be true to God. Be true to who you are. And it can be very difficult, but God will give you grace. Don't be a people pleaser because you're robbing your future. You're robbing your moment. You're robbing your spotlight. And I just want to encourage you today with this word not to be a people pleaser. There's a danger in being a people pleaser. There's shame that comes with being a people pleaser. There's complacency that comes. There's tragedies that can come with being a people pleaser. Seek to know yourself for who you are. And this is the word that I have for you. I just want to encourage you. Don't be a people pleaser. Wherever that you are today, grab as much wisdom as you can. Learn as much as you can. Gain as much skills as you can so that you won't be a people pleaser. Don't be in that place or that process or time of waiting and you think it's just a time to party and to enjoy yourself. You know, grow as much as you can so that you will come to a point where you no longer need to please people. A point where you're confident enough to please God and to please even yourself, your own desires, to please your calling and your purpose. Be in a place where you're confident enough to fulfill the vision that you have, the desires and the vision that even God has given you. And that comes when you're now mature. That comes from a place of maturity, a place of wisdom, a place whereby you are prepared and fit. And that's the word that I have for you. Just ponder on this. God bless. You. Take care. Bye. Grab a copy of my latest book, Incorruptible Beauty on Amazon, Kindle, and iBooks.